Okay, so if you're watching this video, you're working on activity four in our skeletal muscle physiology lab. And activity four deals with the concept of tetanus in an isolated skeletal muscle. We're using the same hamstring muscle that we would extract from a frog in a real lab situation, and for obvious reasons, we're not doing that here. So, in the first walkthrough video that I provided for you, you'll want to look at the activity one walkthrough if you haven't already. You probably noticed that increasing the voltage, increasing the intensity of a stimulus coming from a neuron to a, muscu a muscle at the neuromuscular junction would increase the force. And up to a point, that is absolutely true. The stronger the stimulus, the more force you can generate from the muscle. Now, one thing that we didn't get to do is look at the effect of frequency, how often we apply those stimuli to a muscle in the actual production of force. And it does turn out that increasing the frequency, increasing how often you stimulate a muscle, and we're talking about many, many stimuli per second, the force actually increases. And again, there will be a plateau here above which we don't see an increase in force, and we'll get into that a little later. Now, there are three terms that are useful to know in this particular lab, all of which deal with tetanus. And tetanus kind of gets a bad rap. Tetanus is, as a disease, is a very serious situation. It's caused by a bacterium that likes to live in sort of rough, moist surfaces, which is why rusty nails are a great place for this bacterium to grow. And it can be a very serious and life-threatening situation if that if you're exposed to that bacteria, which is why we get a vaccine. So um, tetanus as a muscular phenomenon is a little bit different. So we're going to look at three bits of terminology today that are useful to know. So the first is unfused tetanus. Now we'll notice that the more frequent frequently you apply a stimulus, the more the pattern in the graph starts to equal, starts to look like a straight line. If it's not quite a straight line, if there are small decreases in force after you apply a stimulus, that is what we call unfused tetanus. So it almost goes up, up in a straight line, but there are some little humps where you'll notice that the force decreases just a little bit. It never goes anywhere near zero, but there's a slight decrease before applying the next stimulus. Now, if you keep increasing the frequency, if you keep applying more frequent stimuli, eventually it's going to end up looking like a straight, straight line. Those peaks and troughs that you see are going to essentially disappear. And so when it ends up like a straight line, we call that complete or fused tetanus. Now, there will be a point at which we get to a value beyond which, a, a frequency value beyond which there is no more increase in force. And when we get to that point, that's what we call maximal tetanic t tension tetanic referring to the phenomenon of tetanus. So without further ado, let me jump into the activity here, hopefully. So here's the experiment, and we've set the voltage to eight and a half volts, which in a previous experiment we would have determined is sort of the maximal stimulus above which there's really no increase in force. So this is as hard as we can stimulate a muscle and hope to generate maximum force. And we've set the stimuli per second at 50. So we're applying 50 stimuli per second. It's still really, really fast. But we'll see how this affects the muscle. And what we're looking at here is what we call unfused tetanus. So let me show you what this looks like. So you'll notice here, and I've stopped the recording, you'll notice here that we do have small peaks and valleys in our reading. And it's especially easy to see once we reach sort of the maximum here of a force of about five and you'll notice here i'm gonna i'm gonna bump this down to 30 just for comparison if we bump it down to 30 stimuli per second still very fast but a bit slower you'll notice that the force decreases and we have bigger peaks and bigger valleys in our tracing and so that's what I want us to remember. So at 50 stimuli per second, what we're looking at is definitely unfused tetanus. We still have a little bit of a decrease in force between each stimuli, each stimulus, I should say. So now 
we're gonna we're gonna skip around a little bit. We're gonna bump this all the way up to about 140 stimuli per second. And I'm I'm skipping a lot of steps here, partially by design. I want to make these videos at least a little shorter. So 140 is about almost as high as we possibly can go before we don't have any more increase. So let's see how this changes. So before we had a stimulus uh, force just above five, let's see what happens here. So now we notice that we basically have a straight line. It looks like maybe you were drawing a straight line with a slightly unsteady hand. And that is what we call fused tetanus or complete tetanus, when really there's no decrease in force in between stimuli. And we notice that as we increase that rate of stimuli, that frequency, we also increase the force. Now here the force is 5.91, whereas before it was about 5.1. So we've greatly increased the force. We also experience a slight decrease in force over time, which we'll get into in the next experiment. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and up this by two every time. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and clear the tracings. And you'll notice that there's a force of about 5.91 here. So when we bump it up to 142, it looks about the same, the tracing at least. And when we get to the bottom, we notice there's a very slight increase in force to 5.92. So still an increase, not a big one, but we should keep going to make sure that we're on the right track. What we're looking for here is the maximal tetanic tension. That is the frequency above which we don't have any more increase in force. So this is the maximum amount of force that the muscle can generate. And so now we're going to overlay this here. And we notice that we have another increase to 5.94. So we'll record that. And I'm going to clear this off just so this stands alone. So here we are at 146. We'll see if there's any increase from 5.94. And it looks like there is a very slight increase to 5.95. So now we're going to look for a point at which we don't see an increase, at which we have a maximum force. We can't get any higher. All right. So now it looks pretty similar, hard to tell from the graph. So when we stop this, we'll notice that the stimulus the force, rather, is again 5.95. So it looks like 146 stimuli per second represents maximum tetanic tension. That is the maximum amount of force that we can achieve under tetanus. That is a continuous contraction. And so the, the effect of this is kind of similar to what you might experience with a strobe light. If a strobe light is... is flashing really slowly, you're going to notice every flash. And it's a really cool effect if you start dancing in that strobe light. Um, I highly recommend it. But if you turn that up, if you turn up the frequency of the flashing to something like this, you're almost not going to notice that it's flashing at all. It looks like it's continuous light. And so that's similar to the phenomenon that we're looking at here, where there's really no decrease in force. And to a point, you can generate more force the more frequently you stimulate the muscle. So uh, we see here that our maximum tetanic tension is reached at about 146 stimuli per second. That's a lot. That's really, really fast. So um, again, I hope this was helpful and have a great day.